even though I'm just a lowly person and aren't part of the greater supreme homeland people in black uniforms that I look up to, I'm still part of the federal family that Janet talks about because I snoop for them. And that's what America's about. Total schizophrenic paranoia. Absolutely thinking the terrorists are hiding under every table. Just think, they all look normal, but you know any of them could be a terrorist. Don't trust the public. Only trust Janet, Big Sis Napolitano, and Homeland Security. That's what I've learned. And that's what I do. Yeah, it's in the communities against terrorism alerts. They've put out hundreds of them. They say people wearing blue jeans are using cell phones of the terrorist. I work at a local internet cafe coffee shop, and it told me that there were people doing stuff like trying to have privacy or using voice over IP or communicating through PC games. Man, there's nothing these terrorists won't do. But the number one thing they said was they use cash or credit cards. That's a really scary part. There's a lot of them come in there, a lot of them using cash, and some of them even want to be anonymous and have privacy when they surf the web. Those are the ones you gotta watch. It makes me realize that most of the population are terrorists. There's so many people using cell phones. There's so many people who've got screen blockers, so I can't remember what they're saying. There's even more using cash. Boom, a terrorist. A terrorist everywhere. Hold yourself together. You can do it though. You can do it for America. Do it for Janet. Finally, my life means something. I'm in the FBI now. Trust no one but Janet Dung Beetle Napolitano. No one but her. You've always wanted to be part of an elite team. You got responsibilities now. Now get out there and start spying. Have a large house blend, please. Let me get that for you. Oh yeah, he's definitely one. Listen, um, are you, are, why are you paying cash? Yeah, you all right now? I, I gotta ask you this. It's just a matter of national security. I'm an important person now. Is there a reason you're paying with cash? Uh, it's only a couple of dollars. I just usually pay cash when it's, you know, not very much money. Yeah. Why? That, that, I mean, you... I don't understand how that's any of your business. But, I mean, the privacy is not what America's about. I mean, I've got to report you to Homeland Security. Are you on meds? No, this is the new Homeland. I mean, the TSA sticks their hands down your pants. I mean... I just think you're acting kind of weird. I just I just want a cup of coffee. All right. Yeah. Well, and, and with the inflation, it's actually it's actually five dollars for a cup of coffee. Do you, do you have some more money? I get a I get a cup of coffee, just regular. It's like sure. A medium. Sure. Medium. Anything else? Uh, I'll get a cookie too. You'll you get, get a cookie? cookie. All right. Sure. I'll get that for you. It's a cookie. My God, there's a lot of terrorists. Um, hold, hold on a minute. Can you pay with a credit card, please? I don't know if I have enough in my account, so I'm, I'm just gonna pay cash. Actually, I, I, have, I have a couple 20s here, so I'm just gonna give you a 20. Is that cool? Oh my God, they're everywhere. Oh, they're everywhere. Oh, hold on, I gotta get myself together. I'm Jack Bauer, Jack Bauer. Can you get my change? This... Can I have that? Thanks. You cool? You're being watched. The homeland's keeping you safe, okay? By who? Just get out of here. You're lucky. You know, it's a pretty big boost to my ego to realize I'm a good guy because I spy on everybody. There he is. Oh, he's dangerous. You can tell it. I just act like I'm sneaking up on him. All right. Oh, oh no, it's true. He's looking at InfoWars. In fact, it says in the report that they visit extremists or radical sites. I gotta track him. I gotta do what they told me. Dun, 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 dun. I can almost hear it now. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my gosh, 
Je me suis que là, je Oh man, I'm brave. I'm just like those guys on TV. Yes, yes, FBI. I've got him. I've got him. He he bought coffee with cash, and he was using a proxy server to to search the web. Yes, yes, I've got one of them. He's definitely a terrorist. The dramatization that you just witnessed is absurd, and it's even more absurd because it reflects reality in this country and worldwide today. We are 10 years into the biggest hoax in human history, the threat of terrorism. It is an irrational fear. It is a psychological compulsion that's been engineered into people. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Global terrorism. 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 Evil terrorists. Terrorists, 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 terrorists. Al-Qaeda is still a threat. Many Al-Qaeda groups or Al-Qaeda inspired groups. Homegrown threat. Terrorist threat. Attacking our homeland. When you really pull back from a non-emotional perspective and look at this through a historical lens, you see what a hoax it is. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror. It is absurd. It is ridiculous that the land of the free, home of the brave, is gripped in abject fear, groveling and begging for the government to take our rights, launch wars, engage in secret arrest. Trillions of dollars have been spent in the last decade on anti-terrorism. Our entire society is converting to a domestic police state. Drones in the skies. TSA sticking their hands down your pants, putting you in ionizing radiation chambers, the naked body scanners. But the system knows that it's a fraud. The system itself is actually engaging in terrorism. The truth is, government and its corporate whore media is using this hyped-up threat to actually terrorize the population into giving up our basic liberties. And let's not forget that the former head of Homeland Security, Tom Ridge, a few years ago, even wrote a book admitting that they would issue terror alerts for political gain. Let's read the UN's own definition of terror that is very similar to the FBI's. Criminal acts intended or calculated to provoke a state of terror in the general public. There it is, hidden in plain view. Governments are saying, give up your rights, give us unlimited power and taxation, get behind all these wars for empire, or terrorists are going to get you. That itself is the very definition of terrorism. Now I'm gonna go through some of these statistics. You've got a better chance of dying from a honeybee sting or falling down in your shower than you do of being killed by a terrorist. You have a much better chance of dying water skiing or swimming in your pool or slipping in your bathtub or a deer jumping out in front of you and having a car wreck and dying than you do from terrorists. The numbers are all there. Even Scientific American a few years ago did a big breakdown on this. Let's just look at the numbers. You've got a one in 540 chance each and every year of developing fatal cancer. If you look at the wars launched in the name of fighting terrorists, in the case of Iraq, the Iraqis had a one in 1,150 chance of dying. Let's look at traffic accidents. In the year 2008, you had a 1 in 8,000 chance of dying in a car wreck. Homicide in the United States, you had a 1 in 22,000 times chance of dying. Let's take terrorism in Northern Ireland during that entire conflict from 1970 to 2007. You had a 1 in 43,000 chance of being killed. If you take all terrorism in the United States from 1970 to 2007, you had a 1 in 3.5 million chance of being killed by a terrorist. And remember, many of those terrorist attacks were actually staged or provocateured to take your freedom. We're not just going to show you the fake threat of terror. 
We're going to show you the real threats to human society. And we're going to expose the number one killer of human beings in the last 100 years. This information that you're about to see could save billions of lives. And in every case, these threats flow from the global technocratic elite and their scientific dictatorship. Is that gas? And it's not just that the elite are a threat to the general public. I've analyzed this thing from one end to the other. They're the greatest threat to themselves. But wasn't that the case with Hitler turning east into Russia or Napoleon or even Julius Caesar? It's the fact that they're so arrogant, so filled with bravada and chutzpah that they think they're God. These control freaks are gonna bring themselves down and all the rest of us with them if we don't wake up and stop them. Of all the real proven threats to humanity, none of them have killed as many people as government itself. In academia, it's known as democide. But notice, you've probably never heard that, even if you went to college. And you've certainly never seen it on the news or on the Discovery Channel. Oh no, they're too busy telling you about sharks they're gonna get you any minute. With Shark Week and Bin Laden and we gotta stick our hands down your pants. No, you never hear about democide. And it's proven. It's on record that governments have killed over 260 million people. It's a giant number. So big that it's even hard to grasp. That is the number one cause of unnatural death in the 20th and now 21st century. And if you look back at the eons before that, it was always number one. Look what George Washington and many others said. Government is like fire. It is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. You bet it is. 260 plus million dead. Democide. When your government kills you. To put democide into perspective, it would take 10 sports stadiums jam-packed with 100,000 people apiece to represent 1 million souls. China, from 1949 to 1987, the Communist Party killed 76 plus million people. And they even admit it, they're proud of it. The USSR, from 1917 to 1987, killed over 61 million people. Combined Western colonialism killed over 50 million people. Germany, under Hitler, from 1933 to 1945, killed more than 20 million people total, including their own population. Japan, during its imperial orgy, from 1936 to 1945, killed 5 plus million people. Before Mao even got into power, from 1923 to 1948, they killed right around three and a half million. And good old Pol Pot in Cambodia, funded by the U.S. government and Zbigniew Brzezinski from 1975 to 1979, killed around 30% of his population, two million. Turkey during their genocide of the Armenians, 1.8 million. Vietnam, 1.67 million. Poland, 1.585 million. Pakistan, 1.5 plus million. Yugoslavia under Tito, 1,072,000. And the mega murder just continues. North Korea, 1.663 million. Mexico, 1,417,000. Russia, before the communists even got in, killed over 1 million. And it just goes on and on and on. For a whopping conservative total of 262 million governments winning the war against humanity. And let me just be clear, that's governments killing unarmed civilians. That doesn't even count military casualties. If you add those in, it's well over 350 million. So democide, or death by government, is the number one threat because it's already been carried out many, many times and governments all over the world are engaging in mass murder right now and our own government under the National Defense Authorization Act 
is openly stating that they will kill U.S. citizens, secretly arrest U.S. citizens, and have us disappear into secret prisons and black holes. So the gauntlet has been thrown down in front of us. You've seen how governments have overtly killed their populations by the sword, by the gun, by starvation. But what about covert forms of genocide? We're now going to look at that area. And then I'll get into the mad scientist activity of the global rulers who are trying to basically become God. Throughout history, there have been two major movements. Those that are promoting and pushing for human liberty and for empowering humanity and those that seek to dominate and control it. Now, a pseudoscience developed around 1850 in the United Kingdom called eugenics. And the spinoff of that, of course, was the Nazis and their race purification program. But eugenics was funded by the British royal family and was basically just a regurgitation of what royalty had already believed for thousands of years, that they were divine that they had a divine right of kings and that they had a right to enslave, dominate, and kill populations. Now, as liberty grew worldwide, governments began to develop covert means to control populations and to exterminate them. And that's what many famous eugenicists, including Nobel Prize winners, have written about and talked about, like Bertrand Russell. Diet injections and injunctions will combine from a very early age to produce the sort of character and the sort of beliefs that the authorities consider desirable. And any serious criticism of the powers that be will become psychologically impossible. Bertrand Russell. You can go back to the 1920s and 30s and they obsess on putting chemicals in our food, in our water to make us less aggressive, more docile, to dumb us down so we will submit. What's so frustrating about these covert programs at population reduction is that they're not really covert. Sure, it's not on the nightly news, but it's all hidden in plain view. You know about the experimentation on black men injecting them with syphilis and Tuskegee experiment and plague bomb test off the coast of Scotland and all of England being sprayed with biologicals or Henry Kissinger in the 1970s putting out U.S. policy, State Department Memorandum 200, that called for using food and war as a weapon to reduce populations in the third world. It is so diabolical. This corporatist world government is built and based on reducing population. And it's in the British Population Commission documents of 1949. White House science czar John P. Holdren wrote in the 1970s, that they should develop covert chemicals in the water to reduce fertility and the population. It's amazing. They admit that they're establishing a global corporate government to carry out genocide covertly through vaccines, through sodium fluoride, through sterilants like bisphenol A, aspartame. The list goes on and on. It is all meant to poison and debilitate and reduce our fertility. That's why cancer rates have skyrocketed. That's why the United States has the highest rate of cancer, diabetes, neurological disorders. It's all being beta tested here. World government is being established as a straitjacket on the planet so the globalist can carry out genocide. And it's not fair to call them Nazis. The Nazis just moved too quickly and were exposed. It's not fair to call them Nazis because they're worse than Nazis. They are the progenitors of the Nazi idea, but they're patient, they're calm, they pose as philanthropists, but they can't control themselves sometimes. That's why Bill Gates, whose father was the head of Planned Parenthood and a known eugenicist, has admitted he wants to reduce population. And that's what his foundation is really all about. He's bragged about get rid of a grandma and hire 10 teachers. He is spending a million dollars on that last three months of life for that patient. Would it be better not to lay off the, those 10 teachers and to make that trade-off in medical costs? But that's called the death panel, uh, and you're not supposed to have that discussion. He's come out and said, give people vaccines to reduce 
population. So you've got a thing on the left, CO2, that you want to get to zero. Probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Now uh, that's back from high school algebra, but let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. It is so incredibly disgusting. And he's now the number one funder of GMO crops being developed across the world. And in every study that's been done of GMO crops across the board, they massively reduce fertility in the first generation of rats and guinea pigs and other rodents like rabbits. And within three generations, near total sterility and bizarre deformities, shriveled sexual organs, hair growing in the mouth, it is beyond bizarre. Those that ate the genetically engineered soy, they didn't actually show the problems in the first generation. The second generation was slower growth, slower onset for maturity, but by the third generation, that's when the, the, boom, was, the boom hit. And that was when nearly all of the adults had lost the ability to have babies. And then we look at Monsanto, that Bill Gates is the major owner of, the same folks that gave us Agent Orange and you name it. And we learn that in their own cafeteria, in their own restaurants and cantinas, there is no GMO. And then we learn Bill Gates and the Rockefeller Foundation are building underground seed vaults of uninfected non-GMO seeds all over the world at the Arctic Circle and other areas. They are obsessed with giant farms that produce all the food they eat. The cattle are only fed organics. That is then shipped around the world, no matter where they go, their own private chefs prepare their food. But it gets worse. Monsanto, who's gotten their people in all the regulatory positions, is coming out with new federal regs that you can't even be told when you're being fed GMO that's designed to sterilize you and basically give you organ failure and cancer. So they won't eat it in their own Monsanto restaurants at their facilities. And Bill Gates won't eat it. And the Queen of England, who's a known eugenicist, won't eat it. And Prince Philip, who says he wants 80% of you dead, he won't eat it. If I were reincarnated, I would wish to be returned to this earth as a killer virus to lower human population levels. Prince Philip. The Queen of England is obsessed with organic raw milk. But in the United States and Canada and England, they're persecuting Amish and others that are producing it and selling it to their neighbors. And the communist Chinese leadership, who publicly signed on to a eugenics program with the globalists to reduce their population in exchange for development, their inner party chiefs are obsessed on record with nothing but pure organic food while they force GMO on their population. It is all about sterilizing the population and giving them cancer. And the graphs and the numbers don't lie. They are building Trojan horse fertility reduction, sterilance and cancer trigger systems into all of the GMO and carrying out a covert genocide program. There are so many other examples of the elite poisoning us while doing everything they can to avoid their own garbage. But I'll give you just one more example here, and that's Germany. And of course, this is going on all over the world. It came out a few years ago that the German government and the top military brass were refusing to take the H1N1 shot. So Big Pharma produced a, quote, clean or safe vaccine for them. And of course, it did come out that the H1N1 vaccines did have uh, other RNA added to it and other viruses and basically was just a Trojan horse for population reduction and there have now been many other vaccine trials that have come out where they're actually killing homeless people in the test and even newborn children. I saw reports a decade ago where the CDC had a secret meeting and Congress demanded the documents. That's why we now have them. And the leadership of the CDC was saying, tell your families don't take the vaccines. It's causing brain damage, but don't tell the public. They learned when Hitler had guys in black uniforms out there shooting people in pits, that was a little too obvious. Now they just soft kill you. And then you go to one of these big Rockefeller controlled hospitals and they suck all your savings out of you. And the globalists have even told us diet injections and injunctions will bring us 
under the heel of the globalist. Our species is incredible. We're dynamic creatures that created space travel and uh, classical music and literature and poetry and film. And these globalist psycho dirtbags now control the media and teach us how bad children are, how pathetic we are, how we're scum, how we have no heroes, how there's no good guys. So we'll just roll over and give the world to them. It's truly disgusting. The ultimate power trip by Ted Turner, Bill Gates, David Rockefeller, people like George Soros, Oprah Winfrey, meeting in secret in New York to talk about ways to forcibly reduce population. And then when the article did leak out, they tried to have it suppressed. That much money, that much power around one table, it begs the question, what were they doing? What were they scheming? Total world domination? This group, together for six hours, was talking about charity, education, emergency relief, global health. The very people that talk about how they want to kill us all day run the global programs to make sure our kids get extra vaccines and eat GMO. It doesn't get any more obvious. This isn't two plus two equals four. This is one plus one equals two. This is so ridiculously obvious. It was the eugenicist, population reductionist Adolf Hitler who said, the bigger the lie, the more people will believe it. And when I first read that as a teenager, I didn't understand it. But as I've learned more, I realize how true that is. Once you tell a giant lie from a position of authority, like David Rockefeller or Ted Turner or Bill Gates, and once the politicians and the general public go along with your lie, they've now all signed on to it and they give power to the lie. Is there a connection with autism, for example? Well, Dr. Wakefield uh, has been shown, used absolutely fraudulent data he had a financial interest in some lawsuits. He created a fake, fake paper. The journal allowed it to run. All the other studies were done, showed no connection whatsoever, again and again and again. Uh, and so it's an absolute lie that has killed thousands of kids. And it's then very hard to reverse that lie because it's got so much momentum and such a great weight because the public is taught that if they ever stand up to the lie, it'll bring down the whole house of cards. My friends, we need to bring down this house of cards. If it doesn't come down, we're ruined. Most of us are already walking dead. We were born being fed deadly fluoride. We had our IQs reduced. We were shot up with dangerous vaccines. We've been fed GMO. It's almost impossible to stay away from it unless you're some billionaire who has their own private farms and ranches and private chefs that fly around behind you preparing your meals. The only way to defeat these people is to realize it is a big lie. It is a giant hoax and to read their own arrogant statements. If a black death could be spread throughout the world once in every generation, Survivors could procreate freely without making the world too full. Bertrand Russell. Talk about sick control freaks who hate humanity so much that they spend their every waking minute trying to think of ways to set up a global government so they can exterminate us and our families. My God. And their plan is so horrific. They think we're too weak-minded to face what they've admittedly been caught doing and to resist them. Are you pathetic scum that deserves to die? Are you going to prove them right? It's up to you. The globalists have been so arrogant that they've not even hidden any of their designs. They think that it's so horrific that we'll just let them get away with what they're doing. Are we smart enough to learn from history? Government is the number one cause of unnatural death throughout all of human history. Government tends to be taken over by psychopaths who are completely ruthless. Good people tend to stand down and let the psychopaths do whatever they want to them simply because they are the authorities. But the technocratic eugenics social engineers are not content to just soft kill the population. All across the Western world, from Australia to the United States, government-funded universities have been developing level four super weaponized viruses and bacteria that kill over 90%
of the mammals that come in contact with it. That's more than nine out of 10 people on your street dead. Weaponized airborne Ebola, weaponized airborne mouse pox that can be designed for humans, weaponized airborne smallpox, weaponized airborne bird flu, weaponized airborne H1N1. Our own government dug up dead whalers who died of the Spanish flu that killed more than 40 million people. And they've dug up the original bubonic plague and replicated it. They've taken every disease ever seen in history and souped it up. And they're now developing massive storehouses of these weapons in the name of biodefense under the BioShield program and storing them in level one, two, and three facilities. Let me put this in layman terms. A level four bioweapons lab should be three floors under the ground, barbed wire fences, minefields, and machine guns, and a system that if the super germs get out, they pull a lever, alarms go off, and the whole place goes up in flames. But instead, the global elite are storing it in level two facilities like the University of Texas at Galveston behind a glass door with a swipe card right there in Petri dishes. And they're doing this so that when they release it to massively reduce population, they can claim it was an accident. This is one of the biggest threats we face is the fact that these eugenicists that run our governments have produced literally hundreds of super weapons and are just waiting until they've got their police state grid in place to release them. There are countless other examples of government weapons programs that endanger our planet. You know about nuclear weapons. You know about uh, systems that kill all the life but leave the buildings in place, like the neutron bomb. But then, of course, there's also race-specific bioweapons that people like Dick Cheney talked about in the PNAC documents. Weapons that kill certain racial types and leave everyone else alive. In fact, it's possible that a weapon could be released and only Asians would live, or a weapon could be released and only people of Northern European derivation would survive, or weapons could be released where only people of Semitic background are killed, or people of Semitic background survive. These systems have been developed and are on record. But getting back into nuclear weapons, the Air Force has admitted they've been testing and trying to develop things like antimatter bombs that could actually destroy the entire planet. And yes, scientists at CERN have come out and said, well, there's a low probability that we'll create a black hole that destroys the Earth, or a strangelet, or a particle that sinks to the center of the Earth and then causes the planet to implode. My problem is this. The globalists have shown that they think they're God, but they're not. They're very reckless. They're full of bravada and chutzpah. And we now have hundreds of nuclear reactors in the world that are close to 40 years old or older, which are now literally rotting. And nine out of 10 reactors are now reportedly leaking radiation. And the elite just doesn't care. You know, a great example of this was in the 1940s when they first tested the first A-bomb. Many of the scientists thought that it could ignite the world's atmosphere and kill the habitability of our planet. Thank God it didn't ignite the atmosphere. But the point is they still went ahead with the test in their search for godlike powers. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And in their own words said, we have become Shiva, the destroyer. We have become Kali, the god of death. We are going to take on these powers even if it destroys us. A few decades later, the United States had tested more than 100 high power hydrogen bombs in the upper atmosphere and in the Van Allen radiation belt. The Air Force wanted to see if they could blow up the atmosphere again. They tell us all day give up our liberties because somebody might detonate a car bomb.
But meanwhile, they're firing hydrogen nuclear weapons into the upper atmosphere in an attempt, in their own words, to blow a hole in the atmosphere. I interviewed years ago the director of HARP, and he admitted that they're able to ignite the atmosphere with this system. Our whole world has become a giant experiment by mad scientists. This presentation is only a small part of the evidence. Unfortunately, the facts are incontrovertible. We have a group of mad scientists who believe that they are supermen in a race separate from general humanity playing God. One reason the globalists are so arrogant is that they've got advanced technology. They've been suppressing what's been doled out of the public. So they think they can control all of these systems. None of this is new. If you go back to every ancient civilization, the elites believed that they were God and the general population was scum. And the longer a dynasty went, the more decadent and crazy it got. The more the elites began to believe that they were infallible and God. And it's this same incredible hubris that is endangering our civilization today. You have all these elite families interbreeding with their aggressive genes, their psychopathic genes, their sociopathic genes, and then philosophers and scientists come along like Thomas Malthus 200 and something years ago in England and says, oh, let's bring back the plague. Let's give people diseases. Let's reduce population. And then you see every other major British scientist and then German, Russian, U.S. scientist since then who's into eugenics saying Malthus was right. Let's promote the plague. Let's kill the general public. And then you've got these inbred elites who are into all this stuff going, absolutely, let's do it. And then you find out they're putting stuff in our vaccines, our food our water, they're engineering Trojan horse genetic traits into food that are causing organ failure and sterility. And you realize that a bunch of crazy psychos are in control. But I'll tell you what's even crazier. These psychopaths aren't even in control. They are so arrogant and think they're so invincible that they've got thousands of laboratories splicing every plant and animal you can imagine. Monkeys that have got five or six other species. Fish that have got insects in them. You name it, it's just pell-mell, helter-skelter, pedal to the metal, wild. If we don't turn this around, we face a nightmare scenario. The globalists are already trying to start World War III right now. They're funding tens of billions of dollars for 30,000 drones in the skies over America. They've got neighborhood watch groups now spying on their neighbors for their political speech. It's getting more and more twilight zone by the minute. Let's rediscover the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Let's rediscover common sense, basic liberty. Let's protect individual rights. Let's get the globalist controllers under control. Let's point out that they're a bunch of lunatics. Let's stop buying into their whole Madison Avenue, Wall Street, Hollywood false reality. Let's rise above their control paradigm and really see it for what it is and call it out. You can't fight this system from within anymore. you got to realize this house of cards is already coming down. And the only way to save our civilization, our species, our society is to face just how dire our straits are. All I want is for our species to continue. All I want is prosperity for our progeny, our great-great-grandchildren, to be able to live in peace and explore space and be successful and look back on the trials and tribulations we went through as an example for the trials and tribulations they're going to face. I mean, the level of corruption and flat-out demonic evil that we're putting up with is just ridiculous. We're at the crossroads, my friends. Our future, our destiny, our very existence is up to you.